there's a lot of things here that need to be reworked. And I would start with who it is that you're trying to target. Again, identifying your target market. And then we need to work on this logo from the ground up. What are we trying to convey? What is the messaging? What is the purpose? What's up friends? My name is Pi. If you're new here, welcome to SLR Lounge. This is your place for no nonsense photography education with a little bit of nonsense. Let's go ahead and dive straight in. Look, we all have time right now. This is a great time to be going and looking at your website, your design, your branding, doing all that stuff. So I thought it'd be fun in this video to create a kind of reaction critique video where we're gonna look at your logos and branding and I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts, overall impressions, everything. Now I would say take the advice and critique with a grain of salt. I have a tendency to be kind of direct and passionate about these subjects because I want you guys to succeed in photography. So let's go ahead and dive straight in. Now we're on the private members forum. I'll tell you guys about that at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and look at our first logo. This is by John White. And I'm gonna go ahead and read what he stated. He said, I've been a local musician for most of my life. Nothing to write home about, but I've had fun playing my keyboard and dive bars. I pay my bills driving a truck locally. Anyway, I have created a logo using my stage name. Music is expressive and creative, and I feel photography is too. I, I love that idea. I like that you've kind of incorporated another passion into this logo design. Let's take a look here. So first, I do dig the kind of signature font styling, like the, the Johnny Keys font and the way that it's written. It's very pleasing, it's easy to read still, it looks great. Um, my only thought here, well I have a couple thoughts. I'm looking at the keys, the piano keys, and they are very recognizable as piano keys, and your name, Johnny Keys. With the piano keys, I almost feel like this is less about photography and more about music. Now granted, you've written in their photography. Um, and so it's kind of like Johnny Key's photography. Yeah, I know that you do photography, but I also wonder like, do you focus on like photographing pianos or maybe musicians or pianists or, it might be a little bit too much. What I would personally say is that incorporating your stage name, Johnny Keys, as the name of your photography business, to me that's already bringing your other passion into the realm of photography. I feel like in the world of photography, that signature, that logo, that kind of identifying stroke should have something to do with your overall message and what you're trying to convey. And right now, I feel like it's a little bit off. So just keep that in mind. Anywhere that you're using this logo, really the most prominent thing are the keys. It's the piano. And I think that might be sending the wrong message. The only other thing I might add is I'm kind of curious as to what type of photography you focus in. Um, which I wonder if that would be you know, possible to incorporate or build into your logo in some way. But nice, thank you for the submission. Let's go to Naveen Chandra. Okay, I do wedding photography, so my brand name and logo is probably a bit strong. I feel it suits my style as I don't go for bright photos. I've had this brand and logo for four years now and only done wedding photography as a side gig, but looking to go full-time in a year. I love that you mentioned that because it reminds me to remind you all that you know, if something's working, if it's not broken, there's not really a need to fix it. That being said, we can always look at something and say, is there a better way that we can convey our message or, you know, work on our logos and branding. But if this has been working great for you, I would say just kind of stick with it. Now I will give you kind of my overall thoughts and impressions. So shooting spree photography. My, my first feeling when I see this logo is it's busy. Um, I have a very complex kind of camera design incorporated into the logo. I mean, we even see like the focus rings and whatnot. See a lot of detail on that camera. Um, in addition to, it looks like you have three different font stylings um, in that logo. And I, I think there's elements of this that are kind of cute. Like I like that the, you know, the eye in shooting, it kind of, the little dot kind of plays into I guess what would be a shutter release on the camera, although I think it's on the opposite side of where it should be. But I think this might be too much. Um, shooting spree photography. Now in terms of the, the, the branding, the name itself, shooting spree photography, it doesn't necessarily convey to me luxury um, per se. Like shooting spree, the words itself, it sounds like you're just kind of haphazardly taking a bunch of photographs. Now it might be a, make a little more sense in the realm of like say children or dog portraits or those kind of things where you're literally on kind of a shooting spree as, as you're capturing movement and that kind of stuff. 
But in the realm of, which I believe you said weddings, yes, in the realm of weddings, I kind of feel like you have a mismatch between the logo branding style versus what your typical clients are gonna be looking for. Now that being said, if your images are fantastic, they can overcome this branding mismatch. But I don't know that you're doing yourself any favors here. Um, I would consider if you're if you're new in your business, and you know, I, I would consider perhaps even possibly changing the name shooting spree to something else. Um, granted, you said that you are four years in, so you'll have to make that call. But at a minimum, I would say that there is a better logo that you can incorporate. I wanna give you guys an example um, while we're here because when I look at this, I feel like we're kind of missing some of the key points that a logo should convey. We, we have the messaging, like we understand that you are a photographer, although we don't know that you're necessarily wedding photography, but we do know that you're a photographer. Um, but the simplicity and the recognizability of that logo, I feel like might be getting lost. So let's do this. I've pulled up actually one of my favorite designers. I actually work with him quite a bit. His name is Gerard and he goes by Spoon Lancer. So you can find him on 99designs and there's plenty of great designers. I'm just giving you guys a personal recommendation of one that I've worked with. But I've selected his logo designs right now. And when you look at these logos, we, we see several different things, like breakfast bar. You can kind of see that the egg is being placed over this bear snout, right? The bear snout is kind of made of the egg. So we kind of get the idea of not only is it a food place, but it's probably somewhere in kind of the outdoors. We get that messaging built into a very simple look and design. Um, same thing with each of these logos. As you look at each of the logos that he designs, there's simplicity to it, while there's also a lot of messaging that carries over. Now, a good logo is not only recognizable, it conveys those messages. It doesn't have that many strokes and colors and all that kind of stuff because we want to design it so that it's easy to print, so that it looks good when it's small, but it also looks good when it's large. There's a lot of different kind of things we want to remember that go into a logo design. So when you look at one of these, we see that. And when I flip back to a lot of these, I, I get this overall complexity. This shooting spree photography logo isn't going to look great small. It's overly busy. The message that it conveys is photography, but I don't know that it ties specifically into wedding photography, and it doesn't feel like it's really a luxury brand. Now, that being said, to hire a designer, if you were to hire someone like um, Gerard Spoonlancer, I do believe like uh, a logo design rate is gonna be about a thousand bucks, but if that's one of those things that you have the budget for, if you can invest in that, I think it's a very worthwhile investment, and here's why. Your logo and your brand is literally the first thing that everybody sees. It's what you're gonna repeat on every image. It's what you're gonna show constantly on your business cards. It's worth investing in as the kind of first impression of your business. If hiring an individual artist is too costly, you can also use like 99designs or other services like that where you can basically start a contest and still get to great results with only 250 bucks or maybe 500 bucks. So there's a lot of options there. So I hope this helps. Let's keep going to our next one. This is from Ganesh Jagandish. Um, just says, thanks for doing this. And this is My Shutter Clicks Photography. So let's go ahead and look. My Shutter Clicks Photography. So my first impressions is kind of like, this is a, a logo and branding that I might expect to see like at Disneyland where you know, you're walking through and you get your pictures taken with Mickey or Minnie and, and there's a store right next to it that has your images there. I don't get, you know, luxury branding from this. Um, I do get the sense that this is primarily for children type photography. Uh, this is more youthful of a brand. Um, so I, I guess it, it would take a little bit more in terms of knowing what you're focusing on and what your branding is. If you are a luxury wedding brand, I would put you in that same category where this doesn't feel like it's, uh, it, it's serving that client. As a client, I would look at this and say, oh, they must be a children's photographer or something else. I'm not gonna hire them. Now, if you are a children's photographer, then great. I would still say there's a few things here. You've used Mickey Mouse's fingers kind of over the camera. We have a lot going on here. You have a camera kind of frame, you have the camera itself, you have the two hands. Um, you also have this like kind of the three E symbol, the three line symbol for the E and it's kind of repeated here. I'm not sure what that is. 
think there's too many components in this and I would again look to simplifying. Also my shutter clicks, like I said, it does convey a lot of images, not necessarily anything, one specific thing that's important. It doesn't have like a luxury kind of connotation to it. So those are kind of my initial thoughts on this um, without knowing kind of who your brand is and who you're targeting. Let's go on to Jeff Gonzalez. Spanish Moss Studios. Okay. So I, I do personally think that the signature fonts are a little bit kind of overused. That being said, this looks good. Um, I don't think, you know, I think from a photographer's side, we, we look at something and we kind of say, oh, we've seen it, we've, we've been there, done that, everybody uses signatures. But at the same time, from a client's perspective, it makes sense. It makes sense because you're signing your artwork, right? So that kind of thing makes sense. Um, I like the, the title, Spanish Moss. Um, I'm, I'm curious what it means, and that's a, a really nice thing with that. I, I think there are opportunities here to build some sort of, you know, Spanish Moss, conveys something, it conveys a symbol, it conveys something that I think could carry over very nicely into a logo identity. Granted, usually you don't use kind of that logo symbol if you're already using, let's say, a signature style, okay? Your signature literally is that that kind of logo. Um, but I would just kind of say like Spanish Moss has a lot of really cool kind of, uh, you know, ideas that come to mind. Now the studios piece, this kind of makes it sound like, again, I'm not sure what kind of photographer you are, um, where your focus is, but studios could be a number of things. It could be, you know, you could be a commercial studio, you could be a motion picture studio, you could be an art studio, you could be so many different things. I don't necessarily connect um, photography. So my initial impression of seeing Spanish Moss Studios is that you're an art gallery. Um, it looks like an art gallery to me when I see like Spanish Moss, very fine art kind of name. Um, but it does have a luxury feel and that's really good. So just kind of some thoughts there. Hopefully that helps Jeff. Tracy Stewart of Tracy Stewart Photography. Okay, so here we have kind of the, the logo identity. The, it looks like a T with an S and it looks like there might even be a P maybe upside down or backwards in there too. Tracy Stewart Photography. Okay, I'll tell you this, I love the typography and the weights of the fonts that you're using in Tracy Stewart photography. It's probably my favorite thing about this logo. The piece that I feel like doesn't quite match is I don't feel like this logo design is necessarily of the same kind of quality and look as the Tracy Stewart photography. It also feels like there's a lot of softness and curves and all this kind of thing in a logo, whereas the font itself that you're using is very much kind of straight lines, sharp edges. So it feels like there's a disconnect between the design of the logo as well as the, the, the actual name of the brand. That being said, when I see it, my first impression is a commercial photographer. It has very much has this kind of commercial photographer vibe. I would just consider either reworking this or hiring a designer to rework this component. Um, and I think you can also slightly improve the typography of the photography piece to sort of match the letter kerning on the uh, Tracy Stewart. So like the kind of width and sizing and, and spacing between each letter could slightly be better matched between these. I think this needs a tiny bit more space on the side. But it looks good. It's a, it's a very nice logo. Lock Lee says, here's mine, thanks for doing this. Lock Lee Films. Okay, I hope I'm saying that right, brother. Lock Lay Films. I can see how you've incorporated the L and the L, so Locklay Films. Okay, I, I like where you're going with it. I, I, I find, you know, the L and the L, it's, it's a pleasing kind of idea to use this as kind of like the, the shapes on a, on a viewfinder, like what you might think when you look through the viewfinder, you know. I like that. Um, I do kind of get the sense that the, the circular rings on the inside, they feel too much. Like, like it, it's just a little bit overboard having three of these concentric circles followed by a fourth kind of circle in the middle. And I get what you're going for. It kind of looks like the lens optics, but that was already sort of implied um, by just the one circle. So I, I feel like that center area might be getting a little bit busy. 
It also looks like the spacing is not quite right. So it looks like the spacing between these lines is off. So when I look at the spacing between the top circle and the next one, as well as this bottom area and the next one, the spacing looks off and it's not quite centered. So it, I, I love the concept, but if you were to hand this to a professional designer that could take this concept and just take it to the nth degree and get you something very polished, right now it doesn't feel polished. It feels a little bit amateurish. Lockley Films, um, I like the simplicity of the, the name. I think it rolls off the tongue easily. I like that you have it, um, you know, the .com right there in the bottom of the logo, that's nice. So I feel like this is a really nice concept and it ties well to your name. I would just love to see it a little more polished. Wesley Jordan, what's up Wes? He says, my business cards are also a circle, which has been great. When people see my sign at bridal shoes at networking events, they go, oh, you're the orange circle guy. Whatever it takes for them to remember me. It's true, like it's a, it's a very distinct logo um, and I like that about this logo. So Wesley Leon Studios. Okay, let me, let me, let me absorb it. Okay. It's things that I love about it. I like the color. I love how bold it is, okay? So the, the boldness, the Wesley Leon, the circle, the, the kind of, uh, you know, this, it has sort of that um, hipster kind of logo feel to it, which I think is great. It's a, its own kind of vibe. Now let me tell you the messages that are sort of conveyed by this logo. The messages that are conveyed by this is bold, vibrant, kind of in your face. So if that matches with the type of imagery you're creating, then I would say you're spot on. You've got a logo and a look and a brand that matches the actual product that you're putting out. Now, if you were to put this same logo over a fine art brand, and one of the person that I'm thinking of is like, say for example, my friend Caroline Tran. So if you look up her website, um, in fact, I can actually look it up. I'm sure she's okay with us showing her off a little bit. Let's pull up Caroline Tran's website. Okay, now you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll see a disconnect from a logo to the brand itself if the logo doesn't really match the look and feel of the imagery. So here on Caroline's imagery, you see this bright and airy kind of Southern California style, very fine art. And you see a logo that very much matches that. She has these kind of like little, uh, I forgot what these things are called, but these little fine art elements of that, the, the, the type face, everything about this kind of screams fine art. And if you put Wesley Leon in that place, I think you can see the mismatch that I'm kind of talking about. That being said, if your brand is dramatic and bold and in your face and all those things, and those are the images that you create, it's beautiful, it's fantastic. So this is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of making sure that your branding matches your product, your vision, your messaging. The only pieces of this logo that I have some questions about is one, the studios in terms of like where it's placed here feels off. Um, I kind of want expect to see it either you know, like underneath, you know, written along the edge of this, um, or maybe kind of pulled tighter and it just feels like the spacing is a little bit off in this, uh, in the studios piece. That being said, I don't know that I have the design chops to fix it, but I can see it. And the next thing is the actual, um, this little, I don't know if that's a lightning bolt. It could be a mustache. It could be a lot of different things, but if this is just an element, then it's just an element. But the thing is, if it's a mustache, I would say make it look more like a mustache. If it's a lightning bolt, I would be asking, why is it a lightning bolt? I think there's an opportunity here to make this symbol something that ties to your messaging and your brand. So don't lose that opportunity because whatever you choose there, it, it does matter. Um, and right now I can't quite tell what it is. So that's probably the only piece that I would change about that. Maybe trying to figure out, um, you know, and, and studios again, doesn't necessarily convey uh, photography. So again, you know, if it's photography, if it's wedding photography, if you have a specific niche, this is an opportunity to identify that niche as well. Okay. So next we have Lander Van Gansen. I'm searching for a logo. Which do you prefer or what do you think? Okay. Lander Van Gansen photography, Lander Van Gansen photos. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I kind of, I'm looking at this and I think it's interesting that you have the, you know, kind of A and the V as the kind of these repeated shapes that go throughout this. Um, Lander, my, my first question would be, what type of photography do you do? I can tell you this, the sense that I get from your logo, I think 
there may be a little bit of similarities here. I, I, for some reason, I'm looking at this and I'm kind of seeing classic uh, like rock albums, like Led Zeppelin and that kind of stuff are, are popping to my mind. But I'm gonna get past that because that's my, the 40, oh my goodness, today I am 40 years old. This is ridiculous. This is my, uh, that's my 40 year old side that's kind of popping out when I look at this. What I would say though is that this reminds me of either perhaps fine art photography, like a fine art studio. Um, gallery type thing or possibly architecture because of the sharp lines and the shapes that are being used in the triangle and whatnot. Um, so again, I'm not sure what your branding is and, and kind of who your kind of target audience is. In fact, the next go around, what I'm going to have you guys do is we're going to actually follow, you know, in, in the business training system in the very first course, we talk about identifying your target market, your niche, building your client personas. Um, I'm actually going to ask you guys to post that in the next one uh, so I can kind of give you guys even more precise critique and, and feedback. But I would say I don't know that I'm necessarily in love with any of them. Um, I think the best one is probably the top one in terms of I, I like the, you know, Lander Van Gansen and the photography and the, the line that kind of separates it. Um, I think it keeps it simple. It's nice. This one on the bottom feels a little bit too much. Like, I also don't like the term photos. Um, photos to me sort of implies cheap. It's kind of like, I think digital. I think, uh, you know, I don't think print. I think kind of like a, a photo, you know what I mean? It's a weird thing, but like there's certain words that kind of convey a more luxury kind of experience. And to me, photography is that word. I also don't like the, the square shape in the back. It's just a little bit too much. Um, too kind of cliche in terms of seeing a, a square or a you know photograph in a photography brand. So I would say personally, the first one is probably my favorite. That being said, I would again tie this back to what is the message that we're trying to convey um, in that brand? Okay, let's go on. Robin Grieve. My logo with my name for personal effect. Lensy Lens, photography by Robin Grieve. Okay, so Lensy Lens. Photography by Robin Grief. All right, so Robin, my, my first thought here is Lensy Lens kind of feels like a, a, an inexpensive lens accessory that you might you know use to wipe down the front of your lens. It kind of feels like maybe a child brand. Um, you know, the way that it kind of rolls off the tongue, it has a nice, um, what, what is it, the alliteration, the, the, it has a nice sound, lensy lens, it kind of, it, it's easy to repeat, but it also sounds childish a little bit. Um, so I don't want you to take this the wrong way because maybe it's been working for you and, and maybe you're married to this concept and this idea, but if you're not, depending on what it is that you're, you're shooting, like if you're primarily doing family photography, I think it could be a great name. Lensy lens is a good name for family, children, you know, uh, dog, portrait, that kind of stuff, again. But if we're considering like, you know, fine art, luxury, commercial, headshot, I, I think you're losing a lot of people with a name that might not convey into the professionalism and the fine art nature of your work. Um, photography by Robin Grieve. I don't know that that necessarily needs to be in there. If you want, you know, your name to be in your logo, it might as well just be Robin Grieve Photography. Um, you, what you're kind of doing is you're building a fictitious brand, Lensy Lens, but then you're attaching it to your name and those, those purposes are kind of separate, right? Usually we choose a fictitious name for our business because we want to detach the business from our own personal name. Similarly, usually we use our own personal name because we want to connect the business to our own personal brand. So right now you're kind of stuck in between these two where you're not really doing one or the other. I also do feel like there's opportunities here to, you know, look into the branding and look into what you're creating and create a logo that is going to be remembered. This logo right now, it presently feels like it's just two different fonts divided by a slash. And I don't know that there's anything necessarily memorable about it or anything that I would want to tag and put, you know, you want this icon, you want this symbol to be something that you repeat throughout your website. If we go back to Spoon Lancer's portfolio, 
you can look at really any one of these, right? Any one of these really offers a logo or a symbol that could, like you can imagine the W of this lion being the symbol that kind of separates blog posts. It's a symbol that's placed onto the imagery. It's a symbol that's placed onto the products. It's a symbol that is used throughout. Right now on the way that this is currently designed, we don't necessarily have that symbol or that look. All right, thank you for submitting. Let's get to Matthew Straton. Here's mine, I have this on white or transparent background too, okay. So Matthew Straton, photo and video. Um, I think first of all, you have a fantastic name, Matt Straton. I think it has a, a very interesting, very kind of already great pen name sort of sound to it. So, so that's really cool. I might even consider putting in Matthew Straton. It sounds so like, like your parents did kind of a lot of the work in giving you a name that sounds literally like a, you know, a photographer, an artist name, Matthew Straton. That sounds amazing. Um, I think I would also appreciate seeing it fully written out. Uh, I don't necessarily mind this font. I do feel like, you know, the photo video doesn't fit. Okay. So when I look at the font of this photo video, it doesn't quite fit. I also feel like it might be a little bit too much. So notice how like the font here, you have that graduating pattern up here. Usually that's a very strong kind of, I understand what the purpose is. It's to kind of make the, the lettering look like gold or kind of like a, a sheen or a polish to it. But that strong of an effect should not be repeated throughout every single letter in the logo. When it is, it feels a little bit overused and a little bit tacky. So like the photo video, not only does the typography need to kind of better match, it should be smaller, perhaps all caps and perhaps a solid color. You know, maybe it's white, maybe it's something else so that it separates itself from the logo itself, okay? The next thing is that at that point, Matt Str Matthew Straton photography and video, um, and I would say, I would say photography and cinematography, right? Um, or at least photo and cinema. But if there's one of these things that you do more than the other, I would focus on it. If you want to include both, fine. But the M and the S up here, it, it feels like a slightly amateurish take at creating this. I, I get it. I get where you're going with this. And again, if you hand this to a professional designer, I think you'd land with something significantly better. Even if they, even if you love this concept, they could refine it. Like I can see inside of a lot of these corners and edges, the, the radius is not set up properly. So there's a lot of divots and dips and unsmooth edges that give the overall look and feel of this logo, uh, kind of this unpolished feel to it. I also feel like the concept of tying the M to the S in the way that it presently is, it's a little bit not so creative. It kind of, I, I feel like you could do more with it. I would more appreciate as it is currently, just Matthew Straton, cinematography and photography without the M and the S. If you're gonna incorporate the M and the S, I would say redesign it or perhaps get a professional to, to do that for you. Okay, male 4VPV, Pavel Varenko photography. All right, Pavel, brother, I'm gonna say you're gonna to need to go back and retackle your logo and branding. Um, this, sort of looks like uh, it's a pixelated stamp that you might see in the corner of like a video that's playing online. Um, it doesn't look like a photography brand. It doesn't look like, it doesn't even look like really a logo. It definitely doesn't convey luxury. There's a lot of things here that need to be reworked. And I would start with who it is that you're trying to target. Again, identifying your target market. And then we need to work on this logo from the ground up. What are we trying to convey? What is the messaging? What is the purpose? When you don't have those messaging, when you don't have the purpose, when you don't know who you're trying to target, when you don't really know what your product is and you try to design a logo, this is exactly where we end up. We end up putting our initials into a circle or a square or a triangle and calling it good. But if your logos are, I mean, if your imagery is professional, this logo is very much gonna take away from that professionalism. So I'd recommend at the moment, just sticking with your name, stick with Pavel Varenko Photography, write it out in a nice font, and that's it. Just stick with that until you have the time or the resources to invest in a professional branding. Okay, Bob Siva, thank you for doing this. Perspective 34 Photography. Interesting. 
I can tell you're, you have, you want to incorporate a lot of meaning into your logo. You have perspective, which as a word, it ties to photography. Um, and I'm, I'm very curious, you know, what you would kind of define perspective as. You have the numbers 34, which makes me curious. Is that your age? Is that, you know, like, what is that significance of that number and photography? Now, I, I, I do feel like it's cliche to build a camera into a photography logo. I'll make exceptions to this. The exceptions are sometimes I'll see a photography logo that's just exceptionally well done and the camera usage is very creative and it's very interesting. But if you incorporate something that's so simple and plain into a logo and it's not done in a creative way, I want you to think that the message it's conveying is sort of anything but creative, right? If you're a photography studio and you shortcutted it by just putting a like a, a, a camera in the background of your logo, it kind of screams to me, not so creative. That's something that everybody might think of or everybody might do, it's cliche. So that's a little bit of the message that I'm getting here where I kind of feel like it's overdone. I, I, I haven't seen anything special here. And I would kind of wonder, are you gonna put that same kind of thought into your photographs? Or are your photographs actually gonna be unique and interesting and, and not just what everybody else is creating? So I know that's definitely not the message that you want to convey. I just want you to understand kind of the, the sense that I get from, from looking at this. So if you're going to use the camera, I do feel like it needs to be in a very creative sort of usage. Otherwise, I would steer clear. You have an interesting concept here with perspective. What does perspective mean? What does it mean to you? What is your message? What are you trying to convey to your audience? Because perspective could be, you know, shooting down from the ground or high from a mountaintop. It could be so many different things you could say perspective and show the formation of a mountain in the background or whatever it might be um, to convey what you're essentially trying to say again the 34 i'm kind of curious as to what that means and if it doesn't have a purpose i might think of you know tweaking that or modifying that um, but yeah that's the kind of overall is I, I would love for a little bit more of a creative approach to this i i do like the kind of signature font of the perspective I would say that it works nicely with names, right? The signature works nicely with a name font. For a fictitious business name, I don't know that I would go with this route. Uh, I feel like you're better off using a symbol to represent your brand, and you're better off with a typeface that isn't so kind of candied, cartoony. Let's look at Andy Martin. I'm an aspiring wedding photographer here in the UK. Having just built my own website and associated social media, et cetera. I've always admired SR Lounge, 10 years of the old previous system. That's awesome, man. Thank you. I have literally 10 minutes ago joined premium membership, having took Pi's advice in the last video to invest in good quality training. You got the best training now. Okay. I'll give you your 10 bucks after this. Just kidding. This was, he was not paid to write this. It was very sweet of you to write this though. Um, okay, so attached is your logo. So we know wedding photography, um, you're based out of the UK. Trimar Photography. Okay. Okay. So I, there's a lot of things that are being done very well here. I mean, it's a simple logo and it conveys a nice message. So Trimar Photography with the love symbol in here, I can probably guess that this is gonna be wedding photography. Um, there, there's a little bit of I find it a little bit odd that the tri mar is lowercase and then the subtitle is uppercase. To me, I think this typography and spacing could be a little bit tightened up, a little bit better, so that the photography kind of fits better within the width of tri mar. Um, that, that to me looks and feels just a little bit odd. I might even use like a thicker font for the tri mar. But I'm very curious what tri mar means. Um, because I'm wondering, I don't mind this heart shape. I would say that the heart shape is a little bit overused. It's a little bit cliche, but at the same time, it looks good. And, and the way that the logo is designed currently, it does have a nice professional feel to it. I don't necessarily get the sense of creativity. It feels a little bit in the box. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just want you to kind of understand the, the message that it's conveying. If Trimar has a significant meaning to it, I wonder if we can't get a logo or a shape on the side of this to tie more so into that meaning, okay? 
That being said, I, I do like it. I like the simplicity of it. I, I think it's a very, it's gonna look good when it's small, when it's large. It'll look good stamped over images. It'll look good, you know, as a separator between different entries. The heart is unique enough of a shape. It's not a standard heart, so it's a unique enough shape that it could stand on its own as well. Um, but that's my only thing is trying to find a little more sense of purpose in what this heart is and the shape that you're utilizing. I like it. So one more, this is gonna be our last one for today. This is from Bianca Moradian. More, more Let's see here, I've been a photographer and designer since 2014. This is my rebrand from 2018. A lot of photographers use their name for their business. I didn't want my company name to be my name. Um, and also have photography and design afterwards because who needs that mouthful? Okay, when I designed my current logo, I wanted a name that would have longevity. List, okay, Pari Studio, pronounced Pari. Pari is one of the ways to say good in Armenian. I'm half, that's cool. It has significance and, and meaning there. Even the correct, okay, it should be love. In the same ring. I chose studio because it covered design and photography and fit better in creative group. I love that you you have a lot of purpose and messaging behind this. This is fantastic. The three circles are a rework from my original logo. These circles are different size and represents my three artistic disciplines. I have a degree in visual arts BFA, which is the smaller circle represents diploma in graphic studio design. Okay. I, I love that you have just shared this and I love that we're ending with this logo. Because uh, I'm going to tell you exactly why. Um, you're, I can tell that you have studied design because your typography, your spacing, the letters and the overall balance of this logo is very, very well done. Pari Studio. I love that there's meaning in Pari. Um, I, I do feel like once people know, like, I wonder if, you know, you're tying it to good um, in Armenian, right? But I wonder if you could get that message a little bit tighter, a little more meaningful, a little bit more relatable, right? Because just knowing that it means simply good in Armenian is not necessarily enough for me. I wanna know why that word good matters to you. Because otherwise it just sounds like you kind of went and looked up good in another language and then put that right in front of the logo and said good studio. But I love the way that it sounds and, and there's nothing that you need to change in the logo. I would just say that it'd be nice to have a message there that maybe ties to childhood or why this word is significant to you. Um, Pari Studio, that's fantastic. Photography and design. I, I, I would say on the photography and design side, you know, once, I, I really want to go in and, and look at your work and I probably will after this um, because it's difficult to do both these things well. Now maybe you do um, and and maybe it very much matches based on like what we see on the website. But I would just say like usually if there's two separate disciplines or two separate things that don't tie together, I would recommend splitting them off into a different website. That being said, if photography and design for you go hand in hand, then by all means keep that within your logo. It's photography and design. I love the meaning and purpose of the shapes on the left side. Now the three circles, if it was just three plain circles, it might be overdone and it might look kind of cruddy. But the way that you've done this, it actually looks really nice. You have two thinner stroke circles on this side, which then expand out to a wider stroke, almost like eclipses, right? And then on this side, you have the thicker side that kind of intersects with these lines. And it creates a very interesting and pleasing shape to look at. It's a symbol that is not only pleasing, it's unique, and it's something that could very well represent you know, your, your brand and be used in several different places. It could be used to, you know, between blog posts. It could be used in a lot of different ways as a signature on an image. It's, it's great, it's fantastic. So really there's nothing that I would change about this. I think it's a really great design. I think the logo is very nice. It's simple, it works large, small, um, can be used anywhere, Pari Studio, I like the name. Um, the only thing that I would kind of take a look at, and it's not to say that it's either way, it's just, you know, is photography and design, are these both the things that you should really focus on or is it more one or the other? Um, and, and very likely if you are, like I can tell from the logo design, if you're, you know, here, you probably do have a business where photography and design tie together completely and it shows throughout your work and in that case, this logo is, is perfect the way it is. I wouldn't change a thing. So, great job, Bianca. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys submitting. So we're gonna wrap this up. And what you might notice 
is that we're actually on the SR Lounge Workshops website. And what we've done is we've added a new forum. So this is a premium members only forum. That means that if you're a premium member, I wanna make sure that you go in, log in and join the member access. This is where we can give you guys one-on-one -on -one attention. We can look at your websites. We can give you critique, give you feedback. We can also answer business related questions. And right now we are keeping the topics focused on business. We think that this is appropriate for the time, given that you know all of us are gonna to need to be working on our businesses over the next bit of time. Um, but we might even open it up to more categories as well. So if you have other categories you want added, let us know. But in the meanwhile, join up, put a picture on your profile so we know who you are, we have a face to your name. In the meanwhile, if you're not a premium member, well, at least join our Facebook group. So Master the Business of Photography on Facebook. It's completely free to join and you guys can learn a lot from an amazing community of photographers, creative artists, and business people. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.